Hello, my name is Joe Scribner. I've been here at this uh, business of auto mechanic repair for 32 years this February. I'm going to read you a story on chapter 10. Dragging along and thinking of all the dreadful things that had happened, John had walked about halfway home when he heard the cheery voice of his father. Hello, hello, called Mr. Midas. Crossing over from the other side of the street, he was on his way home from the station. You left the party rather early, didn't you? What? Mr. Midas had just seen the patches and streaks of chocolate that were drying on John's face and on his clothes. Good gracious, he said. No wonder you left the party early. How did that happen? John burst into tears. It had been all been so awful, but now he could tell his father about his terrible day. He stopped crying, only sniffed a little now and then, as he told the whole story, about taking a coin to the candy store, about buying a box that had turned out to have only one chocolate in it, about the toothpaste, about breakfast, the gloves, the silver dollar, the pencil, the lunch, the trumpet, and finally, the apple duck, ducking water. You mean to tell me they really all turned to chocolate, Mr. Midas asked? You sure you didn't imagine some of this? Oh no, John assured him. Well, Mr. Midas said, still looking doubtful, we're only a couple of blocks from this candy store of yours. Not that I ever noticed one there. Suppose we stroll over to the store and ask the man whether his chocolates always do strange things to people. It's on the next corner, John said, recognizing some of the houses on the side street. Not the next house, not the next house, not the next, he said, but John's voice faded into silence. The corner where he had found the candy store was nothing now but an empty lot, flat, open ground, littered with a pile of rusty tin cans and broken bottles around a splintery old sign saying for sale. Hmm, said Mr. Midas, frowning anxiously at John. I think we better pay a visit to Dr. Cranham before we go home. That's where the store was, though, John protested, beginning to cry again. He had shed more tears that one day, it seemed, and certainly eaten more chocolate than all other days in his life put together. I know it was. Dr. Cranham was a busy man. As luck would have it, however, he was able to see Mr. Midas and John almost at once. Well, 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 said Dr. Cranham. And how are we getting along now, John? Have we cut down on our candy, huh? How do you do, John responded duly. Apparently, he's had a bad day, Dr. Cranham, Mr. Midas said. Terrible at school, you know. A little accident at the birthday party. What I worried about is that he keeps saying that everything he puts in his mouth turns to chocolate. No more than a nursery friend, you see, I'm sure, Dr. Cranham said to Mr. Midas. Well, John, he went on, looking down with a smile. Suppose you tell me in your own words what this matter seems to be. Everything I put in my mouth turns to chocolate, John explained. Everything I eat and everything I drink changes into chocolate. I'm thirsty and I'm getting a pain, a bad one, I think. Dr. Cranham sighed patiently, inviting John to open his mouth and say, Ah, oh. Ah, oh, John said. Dr. Cranham peered into John's mouth briefly and gave a low whistle of surprise. The chocolate eating must stop. He went to the supply cabinet. I don't think there's any time to be lost, he told Mr. Midas. I'm going to give this boy some of my own special compound. Dr. Cranham's LXR, I call it, and it never fails. Dr. Cranham selected large bottle, one of the cabinet's crowded shelves. He removed the top from the bottle. He got a spoon from another shelf. He filled the spoon with the oilish green yellow medicine that had yellowish reddish lights glittering in it. It doesn't taste very pleasant, Dr. Cranium warned John in a pleasant tone of voice, but I'm sure it'll do the trick. Clear the stomach and clear your mind, that's what I always say. Dr. Cranium offered John the brimful spoon. Must I? John asked his father. I know it'll turn into chocolate. Go on, Mr. Midas, nodding encouraging. Bring it down. 